Welcome to Venice and to the house of Lorenzo Rubelli, who lived here in this place until 1917. Well, he's there to greet you on the top of the door, and he was a handsome and a very successful man. He traveled a lot. Well, to his right, we have his parents, Marco and Perina, who were born when the noble Republic of Venice was still active and still existing. And on the other side, there are two of his wives. Well, not at the same time. Lorenzo Rubelli traveled and he lived in Jeddah, now Saudi Arabia, where actually his first wife, my great-great-grandmother, died and was buried. He then moved to Alexandria in Egypt, where he met Gabrielle Bleton, his second wife, and afterwards returned to Venice. In Venice, he had his third wife, a very young one, who finally survived him. But this was uh, his home for the, for the last year of his life. And I now welcome you to enter into it and discover the secrets of this house. Please follow me. We are now in Capisani Rubelli, a palace which was built in the mid 14th century on what was Piscina San Samuele, a pool. So it was mud, and when you build on mud, buildings are never stable, and that's a characteristic of the whole city of Venice. In fact, Venetian made floors with a lot of thick beams which could keep the house together. Venetian invited the terrazzo floor, which is made with pieces of marble, which can be easily patched and fixed, even when the floor is not straight. Buildings were made of bricks, stone would, would have been too heavy, and they often cracks because of this movement. That's why I believe Venetian loved to upholster the room with textiles, and of course, in particular, silk textiles. And I have to say, silk on the walls or any other textiles make a room, makes a room very comfortable. I invite you to live with it. <laughs> so why did the Venetians, or these people becoming later Venetians, come to inhabit these uncomfortable islands? Well, it's easy, 1,600 years ago, there were the invasions of the barbarian destroying the Roman Empire, and these islands in the middle of the lagoon were a safe harbor to hide and to continue li life. Instead of remaining a, a people of fishermen, they were smart enough to start trading. And they had a, a the reference Byzanti Byzantium, the city, the Roman Empire of the East and made a fortune, became really one of the main powers of the Mediterranean Sea, trading with the different parts of the, world, of the known world. Activity started in Venice, and Venice concentrated in the arts of luxury, art itself, of course, jewelry, perfumes, books. Venice was a famous city for editing books. And then, of course, what we all know, the glass industry, which is still very much known, confined to the island of Murano, and the silk industry, which was one of the activity which made the city of Venice extremely rich. The top of the activity of silk was in the 15th, 16th centuries, but it continued. It decayed at the end of the Republic of Venice, we're talking so the last years of the 18th century, and the, eight, the 19th century was a sad time for Venice, until the revival star, style brought back to life all these activities. Important visitors, such as the American Isabella Stewart Gardner, would travel to Italy, and Venice in particular, to buy art. They would need textiles to upholster their homes, and that's how the activity started for Rubelli. Lorenzo Rubelli, in 1889, acquired an existing weaving mill and shop in Venice, and he continued the activity servicing this market of uh, people who wanted to still enjoy the glory of the Venetian past. I now invite you to move to what is uh, the seat of the Rubelli Foundation, which keeps, preserves beautiful documents of the antique art of weaving, Venetian art of weaving, and the early production of the Rubelli Company. This is our museum a collection of antique textiles that tell the story of the art of weaving and the highlights of the Rubelli productions. I want to start by showing these fragments, extremely precious fragments of Venetian production, end of the 15th century, 
deep velvet with this red, which is amazing, still after over 500 years, and the alluciolato, these velvets which are woven with real silk thread. They still have so much life in them. Near them, there is also another uh, piece of velvet. That's a reproduction of Rubelli, revival style. You can see it almost matches the original of, the, of 500 years earlier. Of course, the originals were nicer. Silk, gold was woven with the silk, and Venice specialized later in weaving textiles, which were almost entirely covered by gold and silver, real gold and real silver, such as this example, a church vestments with these bright colors and these different types of metal. We still weave gold, real gold, as in our room, our room meaning uh, gold in Latin, and this is a textile with uh, woven in gold and silk. Nothing can be as precious as this. But I mentioned the velvets, the highest production of Venetian uh, weaving art, and uh, this is one of the examples of uh, the uh, fabrics uh, that marked uh, the restart of the Rubelli production. It's a typical 18th century um, production uh, designed with a cut and loop velvet. But uh, the same technique was woven also to produce uh, textiles uh, with the design of the time. This is an example dated 1934, modern art. It is still in the collection. My great-grandfather had also worked uh, with artists of the time, such as the famed Gio Ponti. And Gio Ponti designed this amazing velvet, which uses the technique of the past, but has a timeless pattern. It's called punteggiato, dotted, and it's one of my favorite pieces of the collection. Velvets, jacquards, this is still a production, and we still have the looms to weave them all. They are in Cucciago, a small village in the Como area, it's there where the silk is still produced in Italy. And, and I welcome you to see, make a quick tour around our, mill, our looms in Cuchago.
you have visited a weaving mill in Cucciago, where you have seen the antique looms, parts of which date back to the 18th century, and the high-tech looms, where we weave all kinds of textiles. Other than the artistic textile, we specialize now in high-performance textiles. These are some of the textures of our collection, which perform so incredibly high abrasion, easy care, washable. They even suit any public area because of their being non-flame retardant. And some of them are even outdoor. We have developed our knowledge in the weaving to create these easy care, high performance textiles. But I have to admit, our heart stays with art our artistic fabrics, uh, and uh, which we still produce, uh, such as San Marco, our iconic damask, which is still part of our history, and uh, where you see the variation of the color in uh, the way it is woven. And there are so many other textiles that we weave uh, out of the silk, out of the silk warp, uh, and which are iconic for Rubelli. Um, we love art. We're in Venice, the most artistic of all cities. How could we not love art and support art? We support all those who support Venice. So we help and we contribute to uh, the American particular committee, say Venice, a Venetian heritage, to maintain the pieces of art of Venice. And we are also supporters of the Peggy Guggenheim collection in Venice since many years. We're part of Interprese, those company that are behind the Peggy Guggenheim collection. In a year difficult as this, we have decided to homage the Peggy Guggenheim collection by creating a special fabric inspired by the entrance gate. It's a work of art of an American artist, Claire Falkenstein, and we loved the way you can see through and the way it creates with these shapes. Here comes then beyond. Beyond a woven lampus out of silk with a lot of wefts, which has the memory of the entrance gate to the Peggy Guggenheim collection. In black, you see the lines of the gate. In white, the stone of the palace of the home of the Peggy Guggenheim collection. The pieces of glass are remembered by these stains of color. And you have the color of the garden of Peggy Guggenheim and the Grand Canal, which is on the other side of the uh, palace. Art, that's in our heart and it's part of our identity. So I leave you with this fabric and please discover all the rest about the Rubelli history.